Welcome back to Postulates of Quantum Mechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about another quantum mechanical postulate, which is the orthogonality of wave functions. Okay, so what does it mean for two functions or two vectors to be orthogonal? Well, it basically means they're perpendicular. So, again, this is pretty simple, but what does it mean to be perpendicular? Well, imagine you're walking on the ground, right? The ground is flat, you're standing up, so you, your body, if you're standing on the ground, is perpendicular to the ground, okay? It just means that the two functions basically are 90 degrees from one another, okay? And we've already introduced the wave function, which is xi. It contains all available information about the particle or a wave in that function. And once we've normalized the two-wave functions, which is what we've talked about in previous videos, we've talked about normalization and it's very important, we can do a bunch of stuff with it. We talked about how you can calculate expectation values in the previous videos, but now we can actually determine whether or not two-wave functions are orthogonal to each other, whether or not they are perpendicular. And this may seem kind of like a dumb, trivial thing, but it turns out that it's actually important um, for future applications of this stuff. All right, so, just keep in mind that for, for this, we're going to define two different wave functions because we don't want to use the same wave function. We want to use two different wave functions to see if they're orthogonal. So I'm going to call one of these xi1 and the other xi2. Okay? And just remember that this wave function is some function times its normalization constant, and the second wave function is some other function times its normalization constant. But these normalization constants, n1 and n2, are not necessarily the same. So you can't just take one of them and square it. You have to take the two separate normalization constants. Okay? So here's an integral that we've seen something similar to um, uh, very frequently recently. What you do is you take the two normalization constants, n1 and n2, which of course are constants, so you can pull them out in front of the integral, and you integrate from negative to positive infinity or just across all space. If you're doing... Sp uh, polar coordinates in a circle would be 0 to 2 pi. Okay, but what you do is you take xi1 and multiply by xi2 star dx, and if xi1 and xi2 are orthogonal to each other, this integral will come out to be 0. Okay, so if it comes out to be 0, then xi1 and xi2 are perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. Okay, if it does not come out to be 0, then they're not. Okay, now notice in this first one that I have written here, I have xi2 as the complex conjugate. Again, it doesn't matter which of the wave functions you make the complex conjugate. So what I did here is on the bottom here, I switched them. I have n1 times n2 times the integral from negative to positive infinity of xi2 times xi1 star dx equals zero. If the two wave functions are orthogonal, a, the integral goes to zero, and two, it doesn't matter which of the functions you make the complex conjugate, okay? It doesn't matter, all right? So this is how you show that two wave functions are orthogonal. Now let's look at something in real life, um, well this is all real life, but something that you've seen probably in multiple courses before you reached PCHEM um, that you might be able to relate, relate to a little bit better. Now one of the things we're going to go to eventually in quantum mechanics is that the orbitals that you saw in general chemistry, so s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, etc., are actually, they come out of wave functions, okay, that we'll see much later when we actually get to models. Now take for example the p orbitals which are shown here and they're denoted in different colors. Px is blue, Py is red, and Pz is black. Remember that there are three p orbitals per subshell. So, each of the p orbitals is oriented differently in space. Remember that? The, for example, the Px orbital in blue is oriented on the x-axis, whereas the Py orbital in red is along the y-axis. Well, x and y are perpendicular to each other, just like x and z would be in y and z. All three of these p orbitals are perpendicular to all the others. So for example, if you knew what the wave function is for the px orbital, and you knew what it was for the py orbital, if you did the same concept, now you'd have to have the normalization constants, but that's not the point. If you integrated from negative to positive infinity for a px star, let's say, py star, again, the star doesn't matter, okay? One of them just has to be the complex conjugate. And you integrated over all space, you would get zero. Why? Because the wave functions for x and y p orbitals, 
they're perpendicular or orthogonal to each other, okay? So the interval would be zero. You would get the same result if you did this for the x orbital and the pz orbital, okay? They're orthogonal, so the integral is zero. Now, one of the reasons why this turns out to be, and it's not really so much important for being able to do the problems, but it's just worth mentioning. Wave functions are vectors, okay? It may not be intuitive, but these wave functions are vectors. It will be important to understand that in the next video. But if we, denote, if we represent the wave function as a v vector, v1, v2, if we were to multiply two vectors, Multiplication of two vectors is called a dot product. You may have seen that perhaps in multivariable calculus. If you multiply two vectors together, you're taking their dot product. And if vector one and vector two, if these two vectors are perpendicular, the dot product is zero. Okay? The dot product of two perpendicular vectors is zero. So if these wave functions are vectors, then v1 times v2 is the same thing as xi1 times xi2. And that would be the same as the dot product of xi1 and xi2. And since they're perpendicular, it's zero. Because the dot product of two orthogonal functions is zero. Okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We'll also do another practice problem, a full problem, where we actually have two different wave functions. And we will actually determine whether or not the functions are orthogonal and compute the whole integral, etc. Okay? So make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. We'll do that practice problem, and then after that we're going to go into orthonormality of wave functions and basis sets, which is kind of a, a difficult concept to understand, but I'm hopefully going to break it down to where it's easy to digest. Thank you for watching, make sure to like and subscribe.